Number 8. Secret Nazi Base As the Nazis rose to power during the 1930s, they decided that they wanted to claim part of Antarctica as their own. Toward the end of the decade, an expedition traveled to the continent to survey the region and search for lucrative opportunities. One of their goals was to find alternatives to oil and fat-based products like butter, milk, cream, lard, bacon, margarine, and candles. At the time, Germany depended heavily on the import of these items from other countries. The Nazis wanted to be prepared for self-sufficiency in the case they were barred from trade as a consequence of their actions. Whale oil was a key ingredient in margarine, so it appealed to the Germans as a potentially valuable resource, and Antarctica seemed like it might be an appropriate place to find and harvest it. The Germans typically bought whale oil from Norway, but didn't want to give the country their business. They embarked on the Antarctic expedition in December 1938, heading toward an area now known as Droning Maudland, but the Norwegians beat the Nazis to the region by an entire month and staked their claim to it. The Germans disputed this, and in 1939 they asserted their own ownership of the area and named it Neuschwabenland, after the expedition's ship. They planned two future voyages, which never happened due to escalating tensions between the Axis and Allied powers. At some point, rumors began circulating about a secret Nazi facility in Antarctica called Base 22. While it's believed that the Germans did plan to build a base there, there's no evidence to indicate that they turned this vision into a reality. They abandoned their claim to the territory in 1945 as the war drew to a close, and it became increasingly clear that the Allies were going to win. Number 7. Salina Turda Salina Turda is one of the world's oldest salt mines. Located in modern-day Romania, its history dates at least as far back as the Middle Ages. Some historians believe that mining activities may have started during the Roman era, but there's no clear evidence to say one way or the other. It's possible that any signs of it were destroyed over time. Over 3 billion tons of salt were mined at Salina Turda between then and 1932, when the mine officially closed. The site, which lies 400 feet, 122 meters underground, has been used for various purposes since then. During World War II, it functioned as a bomb shelter. At one point, the mine was used as a cheese warehouse. Salina Turda opened to tourists in 1992. Today, it's home to a sci-fi-themed amusement park. It features numerous attractions, including a Ferris wheel, an underground lake with row and paddle boats, ping pong, a bowling alley, an amphitheater, and many golf courses. The mine also has a spa where it offers salt-based wellness treatments known as halotherapy. Those who are more interested in Selena Turda's history can see some of the mines firsthand and visit the museum. The Krivak Room features a rudimentary machine that was used at the site starting in 1881. In the Terezia mine, there's an underground lake with a salt island in the middle. There's a panoramic elevator in the Rudolf mine offering visitors a stunning view of the facility and the Losef mine is famous for its powerful echo. Salina Turda has enough unmined salt to provide for the entire planet for 60 years should the need ever arise. Number 6. Don Juan Pond If you wanted to visit the world's saltiest body of water, you'd be out of luck. It can only be seen in satellite images because it's located in Antarctica. The ankle-deep Don Juan Pond is situated in the lowest part of the Upper Right Valley. With a salinity level of 40%, it's saltier than even the Dead Sea, which is 34% saline. Temperatures in the region drop as low as minus 58 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 50 degrees Celsius during the winter. But the Don Juan Pond never freezes due to its salt content. Scientists know relatively little about the pond, including whether it supports microscopic life. If it does, then it means that at some point, life may have existed on Mars, which is chock full of salt and had abundant water until around 3 billion years ago. Speaking with NASA, geologist Jay Dixon explained that life has been detected near the pond and that the water body itself contains possible evidence of biological activity. But scientists will need to take a closer look because the activity they've observed could be caused by non-living processes. Researchers once thought that this hypersaline lake was fed by an underground water source but they now believe that the salt draws in moisture from the atmosphere in a process called deliquescence. Just like any body of water, the Don Juan Pond has changed over time. It's much smaller and shallower than it used to be. During the early 90s, its maximum depth was estimated to be about 1 foot, 30.5 centimeters. By 1997, its depth had reduced to just 3.9 inches, 10 centimeters, and it nearly dried up completely the following year. Number 5. North Star Missile Silo Kansas is probably one of the last places most people would expect to find a decommissioned Cold War era structure, and you're unlikely to spot one in plain sight. But if you look really hard, you'll find a lone, seemingly out of place doorway a few miles east of Gypsum. 
Behind that door, there's a staircase that descends 200 feet, 61 meters underground, to what's known as the North Star Missile Silo. Built during the Cold War era as one of 12 storage places for holding nuclear weapons, the silo was designed to protect missiles and their launch crews from an incoming blast and to facilitate a rapid response to an attack. It was constructed with the strongest concrete that was available at the time and was reinforced with a steel framework equipped with springs that acted as shock absorbers. The amount of concrete that went into building the silos could pave a 6-inch, 15.2 centimeter thick, 20-foot, 6.1 meter wide highway from St. Louis to Chicago, according to the official North Star Missile Silo website. Each structure came with a hefty price tag of $110 million, which would amount to over $1 billion today. The North Star Missile Silo was decommissioned in 1965, after then-President John F. Kennedy and Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev agreed that only a crazy person who wanted to destroy the world would resort to nuclear war. While Cold War tensions and widespread fear of nuclear war were far from over, this mutual understanding made U.S. officials feel comfortable enough to disarm the 12 silos. The North Star Silo is one of few that remain intact today. It sits on an 18-acre, 7.3 hectares property that's currently for sale for $989,000. Developer Paul Novitska cleaned and partially renovated the structure last year, leaving it ready for whomever decides to turn it into their own private bunker or living space. Are there any Cold War relics you're super interested in? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're telling us, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Number 4. Exeter's Underground Tunnels England is famous for its underground history. Over the centuries, as new civilizations conquered the land and as societies upgraded their infrastructures, they built new streets and buildings on top of old ones. And as space above ground became increasingly scarce, builders began implementing subterranean tunnels and passages as a way to bypass the bustling crowds and get from point A to point B more quickly, and to deliver utilities to the population. Beneath Exeter, there's a series of medieval tunnels unlike any other throughout the country. Built during the 14th century, these crude, narrow labyrinths carried clean drinking water to residents from natural springs on the city's outskirts. A series of lead pipes brought the water right into the heart of the metropolis at a time when having easy access to the precious commodity was a luxury. Most people couldn't afford to have it piped directly into their home, and the tunnels were designed mainly for merchants. But it also carried water to a public fountain, making it easier for Exeter's residents to obtain. Knowing that the system would need maintenance, its builders ensured that the vaulted tunnels were just big enough for workers to navigate, and they implemented various entry points so that it was easy to access them. The tunnels were sealed off during England's Civil War to prevent them from being used as a way to secretly encroach upon the city. They were reopened after the fighting ended and remained in use until a cholera epidemic hit Exeter during the 19th century. At that point, it became clear that the city needed more water sources, and steps were taken to get away from well water and modernize the system. The passages were closed in 1901 once these upgrades were completed. Over the years, they were forgotten about and fell into disrepair. The first guided tours were offered during the 1930s amid a renewed interest in the tunnels. There are different sections which were built at different times, with each containing its own unique archaeological history. Number 3. Church of San Juan Parangari Cutiro One day in 1943, a volcano began forming in a farmer's field in the Mexican state of Michoacán. As it erupted, the ground shook causing church bells to ring two miles away, 3.2 kilometers away in the village of San Juan Parangaricutiro. Within a year, the lava and ashes reached San Juan and buried most of it, along with the nearby town of Paricutin. The volcanic outflow breached the church's cemetery walls and covered the gravestones, leaving only the building's tower and altar untouched. By then, residents had evacuated, and thankfully nobody was harmed. But their town was destroyed, and the volcano continued to erupt for another eight years. With no end to the destruction in sight, they rebuilt the village and constructed a new church in an area that was unaffected by the eruptions. They named it Nuevo San Juan Parigaricutiro, which translates to New San Juan Parigaricutiro. Today, the ruins of the old town are almost completely covered, with the church protruding from the volcanic deposits as the only reminder of the village that once existed there. The Paricutin volcano, which was absent from the landscape just decades ago, can be seen off in the distance. It's one of the world's youngest volcanoes, when the eruptions finally stopped, its peak had reached an elevation of 9,186 feet, 2,808 meters. But it'll never get any taller because it's a monogenetic volcano, which means it will never erupt again. Number 2. Petite Ceinture Petite Ceinture is French for Little Belt. This is the name of an old railroad that loops around central Paris, but is no longer in use today. From 1862 to 1934, it offered connections between main train stations and fortified the city. 
The Petite Centure gradually became obsolete due to urban sprawl and the implementation of the Paris Metro subway system. Nature has reclaimed the site with over 200 plant species and 70 animals occupying stretches of the abandoned railroad. Its bridges and tunnels remain intact with graffiti and occasional visitors serving as the only signs of a human presence. Several sections of the Petite Centure are open to the public, including a nature trail that opened in 2008. Travel blogger Sophie Nadeau described the walkways as an eerily silent escape in the midst of a bustling city. The closed portions of the railroad attract urban explorers, but with dark, rat-infested tunnels and rough terrain, they aren't ideal for inexperienced adventurers. Anyway, why risk your safety in getting arrested for trespassing when you can freely enjoy the areas that welcome visitors? Number 1. Ireland's Alcatraz People fled Ireland in droves in the mid-19th century during what became known as the Great Potato Famine. But not everyone had the choice to leave. As immigrants sailed out of Cork Harbor, they caught a rare glimpse of Spike Island, which was home to the country's most notorious prison. Many of the inmates it housed were locked up for theft, which was on the rise as millions of the country's residents suffered on the brink of starvation. The sprawling complex originally functioned as a military base, but was later converted into a penitentiary to accommodate an overflow of prisoners from other facilities. Opened in 1847, it was a virtual hell on earth. Designed to hold just a few hundred convicts, the overcrowded prison housed as many as 2,500 people at its peak population. In fact, it was once the world's largest prison. The drinking water was contaminated with sewage and medical care was poor at best, with just one doctor available to treat inmates. Prisoners were malnourished while forced to perform brutal hard labor. Consequently, over 1,000 inmates died during the first seven years of operation. They were buried in a cemetery on the island, which was eventually covered with landfill to cover up the mass deaths that were occurring there. The Spike Island prison continued to operate until the late 20th century, when it became a youth correctional facility. It closed its doors for good in 2004 and has since become a tourist attraction. There are numerous underground tunnels and fortresses at the site, which were sealed up when they were no longer needed. They've only been partially excavated. Last year, archaeologists found a hidden stone staircase and tunnel dating back to the 18th century. In it, they found animal bones and wine bottles, some of which were half full. As more discoveries continue to be made, experts are piecing together a more complete picture of the site's complex history and what really went on at the prison at a time when oversight was minimal and treatment toward criminals was draconian at best. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to learn about more hidden places, let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.